what do you guys think was that was that very confusing i was locked in oh, all right let me read some chat hello alpha farming data i ching is cool i ching so too if you looked at the ching for the way oh i ching i see i see what you're saying the religious part but it was like based in math that makes, makes a lot of sense but well put together thank you very much cootie i thought i thought about this farming data thing before you put it all like what before you but you put it all like really nicely thank you boss yeah i mean have you seen i'm guessing you've seen the social dilemma well that movie is blowing my mind it's my whole project but how do you i don't know what they said i haven't finished the movie i don't know what they suggest at the end and um yeah hopefully i can build on that but what are because um, like we've been doing just research right from my presentation you can see is pretty much just like it's pure research i'm not designing anything i'm literally just tracing scientific like studies of the past and like i think um, and that's also a lot of quite a big question for a lot of us in the unit but i think what what how they're 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 saying their design strategy is is to understand something first which is completely fair and then I think what they want might be to pick a counter movement. So you have all of the social dilemma thing of like big tech company manipulating data, manipulating people through collecting data and, and using predictions to generate the future. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Something I forgot to say. Right. Something I forgot to say about quantum computing. Very important. The more data, so I think most of us can agree, the more data that a computer can take in, the more accurate we'll believe its predictions to be. So for example, Back in the days, the bomb machine you can only take in a few data to predict these bombs, and now we have supercomputers that can take in hundreds of thousands of millions of people's data at once. And uh, okay, this is a bad example. Let's say weather weather app. The more weather data it can intake, the more accurate output it can output. That's fair enough to say. I think it's like it's like saying what food I like based on what I tell you I like, what food you predict that I will like. If I tell you what I like, and if I tell you that I like three foods, it will be harder than if I told you 20 foods that I like to predict what else I like. You know what I'm saying? So now what the thing with quantum computers is that it will be able to take in so much input that will automatically kind of believe that it will produce a very accurate prediction, which is fair. Probably, you know, scientifically, I guess it can. But also the question is who controls quantum computers and who controls the data that it takes? Because you can falsify data quite easily. You can, you know... When Google said they achieved quantum supremacy by this computer doing an equation and super quickly, how, how, how do you prove that? You can't. They don't show you what data it's doing. You don't show you how they're doing it. You know, it's like a stock market. Let's say this, 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 this fucking big bro on Instagram is trying to sell you his stock market prediction formula for five nine nine, And he's got like, he's got like, he says, oh, we take an inputs from X, Y, Z stock prediction markets and, and now I generate my prediction through this algorithm it's like but it's like magic I can't tell you exactly how it works but it works and versus this other guy that says I take in thousands of stock markets in real time and um, I have this algorithm that's like three pages long and I generate these outcomes you would more likely believe someone with that takes in more data to, to generate his outcomes because we think that's how reality works the more things we consider the more rational our kind of uh, reasoning is which is fair completely fair but the thing is we don't know what these what these big companies take as data they can use very biased data but we will never be able to verify it because the sheer quantity that they will just fuck you with right you're not going to know how instagram builds your algorithm they're never going to show you that it'll probably be pretty bad if they do show you that so yeah now i think the question is what is what is uh, who is controlling quantum computer what are the trajectories that they want for themselves and how might they be selectively taking data to generate a future that they are happy with themselves it's not for our benefits but it's more so for them or for their investors so these are very few people's benefits rather than i guess us yeah uh, i think I'm, I'm done yapping sorry cootie i'm gonna read i don't know if you looked at the ching for the religious part but it was like based on math ching let me see i've heard of this thing yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen these. Yeah, I, I could have easily used that as well. I think these are these are very. That's also a very good example. Um, but yeah, the, but the, the thing is, it's like how these things work, like Yi Ching or like hepatoscopy. It was it was literally as 
formalize as quantum computers today and it was just as important to the society's function as let's say supercomputers are today so i guess it's it's about kind of figuring out the differences and like really comparing them, which i i still need to do um yeah but i, I i'm looking when i look into the quantum computers i'm gonna look study it compare it and find out how some people might already have there's definitely people that already has ideas about this before and to learn from what they're doing and I think our tutor's methodology is to intensify what they're doing and uh, let me tell you a little, little fun fun story of what our, one of our tutors said the other day of the, the, the rhythm, the song so, so he, he, he says he sees the world as a collective song, a melody right, a melody is what he calls it so we all have a collective melody and maybe that is to drink water or nature is good, right? Everyone kind of follows this rhythm and this melody and they vibe to it. And, but there might be certain people that, what is it, that, that, that begins to become, to, to become, to unsync from this rhythm and they go into their own little rhythm. Maybe someone is like, maybe my skin, I have like vampire skin and you know, nature is not good for me or, you know, I, I have a problem walking and stuff and I don't you know nature is not my default choice it, I don't it doesn't affect me like everyone else because there are differences in certain people so they then have to start creating their own little rhythm melody to live by because they cannot conform to everyone else's and that's what we're trying to find with quantum computers and these kind of projects, which is there's this general belief in computers, predictions, technology, and you have to find pockets of people who might might have already started leaving this melody and started singing their own song and seeing what they say and see if you can join in. So obviously it's it's I could have found quantum computers great and I think I'm not I'm not like against technology by any means. I fucking love technology. That's why I chose quantum computers. I really chose it because I love high tech stuff and I love aesthetics. I love machines. I love air conditioners for, for some reason. The, the bottom of air conditioners, they're very pretty. But yeah, I've kind of found an interesting topic of how quantum computers could be used by big tech companies in a bad way. So now I'm trying to find other people that might have had this thought with me and amplify what they're trying to do. So that's kind of the design methodology that we use. Don't know why I'm telling you guys, but maybe it's maybe it's interesting. Right. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, but well, well put together. Thank you very much. I thought about this farming the other thing before you. Before you like before one day. The one, watch it. These ideas are brilliant. Thank you, Alpha. Yeah, I took a very long presentation because I feel like, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, that was like half an hour. But yeah, my actual crit was like 10 minutes. Let me tell you what they said. They had some uh, pretty interesting conceptual brain wank. So we had like four critics, like a few people from the AA and like one material specialist who only speaks when there's materials involved. So he was dead silent in my, in my crit. And then there's some other people who were like looking at my drawings and like, but it didn't really, I don't know how much they know about quantum computers. So first thing they said, I need to have a question for critics. I didn't, I didn't, hey, this, this might be useful for you guys too if you guys are doing Chris, but like you should ask a question at the end of your, at the end of your session. You should like point in a very narrow way. If you know where your project's kind of going, what you're interested in, you should ask them a question. Why prediction? So these are not necessarily all the things I will take in, but these are just comments. Why prediction rather than divination? So divination is kind of what hypotoscopy was called. So this was more to do with like a religious thing, communication with God. So why do I phrase it in prediction rather than divination? Is quantum computer can it be framed in like a more ritualistic way? Have very okay prediction. These are I, I I literally just write down everything they say, and sometimes they say something they don't finish it, so I'm trying to skim through that. Much easier to go specific to general than to go general to specific. I don't know what that means. Have very specific thing I'm looking at prediction, not divination for a reason. Using very scientific methods that I think yeah I am using more scientific methods. Isn't it about having a model? Comes from observation of how things behave. Yeah, so it's about building a model of how things behave, and that thing is what is super fucking powerful. If you can predict the action of all these people, then you can control these people. You can predict and manipulate the action of these people, then you control these people. So there's, okay, so there's this book called The Atlas of Anomalous AI, 
which is a collection of pre-computer examples of how humans imagined AI, which just sounds super fucking cool. But the book is sold out right now, sadly. But it has like cool imageries of what people thought God looked like, which is like a tree of like five suns on it, or like a you know like a biblical accurate angel thing. It's like some some weird looking things. Isaac Asimov, Isaac's Asimov. Yeah, I think that's the book. What is the action? But it's it, it's I think it's supposed to be the father of all science fiction. It's like the very first science fiction, which imagined a future where algorithms what the fuck algorithms can predict everything and knows everything. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it that much. Somehow there is an unknown of the interest of how I've drawn these things. Not the mechanics of the machine, but the institutions that built them. They're all made by people, and their requirements that has enabled the machine to work. Maybe this will point to sight. So I think this this is talking more about how I need to how I, how I can start to understand the intention of big companies like Google, Facebook, and them is by looking at who built them, why they're built, what environments they're built in. I'm trying to get into the mind of the Zuck and like see how see how where how he wants the world to work. So yeah, so someone said I'm not trying to build the next version of quantum computer, but trying to understand how it exists. Which of course there is, and there's this book called The Open. Which is supposed to be fucking sick. It's a, it's it's by Gilgroyd Gambin, The Open. It's a book about the distinction between man, between man and animal, between human and animal, and how we cannot understand, we cannot achieve. I don't know, achieve an enlightenment unless we stop understanding ourselves as separate to animals. But it's not just like we understand ourselves separate to animals, but it's about not separating us to limit the knowledge, to limit the understanding of ourselves. So it's like understanding everything as if you've never seen anything before. Um, and it's called a realized nihilism. But it's saying that you can't just forget about all the con constructs. You need to actively fill it in with new ways of thinking or else um, the emptiness left by the constructs will just be filled in by manipulative systems such as you know algorithms social algorithms and you will not achieve this freedom of free agency so you have to actively empty out historical constructs but fill it in with new ways of perceiving the world that's defined by actual your thinking i think i haven't read the book so i don't know and then once you do that then it's called the open and before you do that it's called the closed so maybe I'm trying to see what quantum computer means. It's the open with the closed or in a superposition of being both at the same time. Idea of secrecy, amount of clearance you need to work on one of these technologies. Yeah, facts. I'm to look into that. Um, traditions of rituals in a protected, protected environment. Where do you put the boundary of knowledge? So where do you, you know, spatially, who gets to know, who doesn't get to know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, institution decides what info gets taken in in order to generate their predictions. And they also have the ability to manipulate us into following how their predictions say things should work. Yeah. How complex is the set of data? The more complex, the more believable. And how do you even interpret data? And the last one, watch Social Dilemma. So that was the general feedback from all of the crits, critics. And I have my personal feedback from the tutors specifically, which is definitely going to be more important. Um, and what I have is, um, yes. how does quantum computing organize and reorganize entire worlds of agency, knowledge, and practices? My little brother likes that. Mm -hmm. My little brother, he was friends, went to Berlin for 24 hours yesterday. Oh, and they went to see some shit. Okay, my writing is so <laughs> jumpy. I guess my, maybe my tutor's words wow. are jumpy. Tendency is to look at what is so interesting Three, about ancient mesopotamia can we understand through spatial and rows of people like all the people involved in preparing such as the priests the hierarchy of priests and its architecture networks of actors priests to understand um what this ritual does and to throw the same question at the contemporary at the quantum computer it's not just a machine with exalted rationality um it has to be mined, there has to be millions of lives that organize how, how to produce this thing. There's people that order it and pay for it. So yeah, look at these things and the, the environments that need and the caretakers that needs for the quantum computer. Cool. The rule of experts, another book recommended. Um, I need to look at it, I haven't seen it yet. 
Right. So when when you had the rise of hepatoscopy, it was offsetting. It was it was it replaced a lot of other methods of prediction、um, to maintain itself as the particular most prominent form. So to do this, what portion of society is it predicting? Is hepatoscopy predicting?、Um, and what what society part of society is it trying to control? So that's quite, I guess, not quite straightforward. It's obviously kind of the most powerful group of the society using hepatoscopy to control the rest, and it will displace all of the methods of prediction that the rest of the society uses for their predictions, and saying that hepatoscopy is the ultimate, ultimate, you know. Most powerful way of prediction, and I guess looking at quantum computers do that. He said, "Throw into ChatGPT academics to find books and articles about quantum computer." Very good suggestion, and gave me a good ChatGPT mode thing to look at as well. So I'll look into that. Watch Social Dilemma film again, and then he gave me this big level question, which he says is a the, the big question you're trying to answer at the end, and it made me shiver my timbers a little bit. I was also quite excited. He just dropped me my entire thesis. Question, which I was very thankful, is the controlling of future behavior and architecture is inherently you is in is is it to be inherently used for asymmetrical political control, or can it be used for something else? So, can quantum computer only be used by big tech companies to prioritize their interests, or can it be used for something else that benefits more of us? Good guys, question, bro. Difference between ritual and computation. The crystallization of labor, life, and political relationships. So this means, I think, this means viewing quantum computers as a more embedded system that's more rigid and less changeable, less malleable than rituals,、um, because of the amount of infrastructure, the amount of manpower and money, and all these things, the securities that goes into it. So, is it much harder to revolt against the quantum computer than it would have been to to like kill the king of ancient Mesopotamia? You know. So yeah, that's what crystallization means. It's like how deeply ingrained is quantum computer compared to rituals. I'm gonna do a split screen study of a ritual versus a quantum computer. So I think it will be a video of a ancient ritual conducted on the left, and maybe a, a kind of a quantum computer functioning on the right. Should be, should, should be pretty fun. And there's another Langdong winner. Something artifact artifacts. Politics. I have to look at Rainiero Panzer, someone else who wrote some good stuff. And yes,、yeah, studying these things through drawing, film, and vivid pictures. Cool. Yeah, that's what he said. That sums up pretty much everything I know about my project right now. I've told you guys everything, pretty much. Yeah. My, my chest hurts. Any feedback, hey guys? Is this your time to shit on? I'm just embarrassed myself in the in front of an entire studio of people. By talking for fucking forty minutes, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that.